So I'm delighted to uh, uh, um, change change gears uh, for the next um, uh, talker with a speaker. We've got Hana Pukasari joining us um, from Osango. She's a smart technologies advisor. Um, welcome, Hana. Lovely to see you. Thanks. Nice to see you. Um, and uh, we're going to um, uh, get to hear from you about, um, uh, well, perhaps you can introduce yourself and your talk. And uh, you've got about 20 minutes. Um, we'll take any questions on the on the way. Um, and uh, we'll also be happy back later to join our panel. So over to you, Hannah. Thank you. So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Hannah Bikusari. And as Claire said, I work as a smart tech advisor for Osango. And my background is from pub public sector events and for, for the last 15 years retail uh, and it was uh, three or four years ago when I made a leap from IT to my favorite and that's operational technology and this presentation is all about that but first few words about Osango so Osango is an independent player in the global market of API management and smart tech consulting and we've been actually listed as one of the key players in the global API management market forecast 2020 to 2025 by market data forecast. We educate and we consult, we teach and we learn. So, and for uh, the next, uh, a short video as an introduction to this operational technology, hopefully. It goes well. Hi, Hannah, you're just, um, I think you've got the video on mute. So um, for the oh. team to be able to hear it, okay? Okay, but let's go forward. So. Why do? Okay, sorry about that. But uh, there was, yeah, you can imagine there was nice background music. <laughs> but next, so operational technology is everywhere. It's from Earth to Mars and beyond. It's a superpower that keeps the industrial processes going and the lights lit at the office, as you saw from the video. Uh, it's the technology beyond IT and it detects and causes change in the invisible technological environment. It runs the air conditioning, heating and cooling, and it sends and receives alarms, and it ensures that the conditions in the server room are optimal for all the transactions and data flow. And in an average 50,000 square meter office building, you have to install thousands of luminaires, thousands of sensors and building automation, thousands of security control devices, and maybe thousands of other IoT devices. And in the end, you have tens of thousands of IoT devices and dozens of different control systems and solutions in a complicated network environment. And don't underestimate the word complicated. 
And that's all operational technology. And they all have to be brought into use almost at the same time. It sounds unreal, but it happens somehow. Last time I gave a presentation for Apides Helsinki, I had just had uh, spent some time opening uh, the Pandora's box of operational technology. I had, I had seen the distance between the need, the delivery and the continuity. I was surprised that the time machine had taken me 10, maybe 15 years back to the first discussions of control transition phase change management, integrations, and silos. And I never had seen such strong build silos. I had a good colleague, Juha Vinikka, opening the doors and driving the change with me. And we encourage our teammates to open their eyes to the new, and we encourage them to get out of their, their comfort zone. And we showed the numbers. That was interesting. We had never seen such a strong resistance. And that kind of little rocket scientist, or actually a dropout theoretical physicist in me, was confused because I just couldn't resonate with the other's wavelength. But still, there was light at the end of the tunnel. As you see in the picture, there was no roof. And the day was sunny. And the resistance was not from the team we were working with. They were supportive and open-minded. And the resistance was not from the, the vendors and service suppliers. It was the whole industry. And it still is. You see, construction and life cycle management of built environment might be the most traditional industry at this point it's big it's strong and it affects us all and it encloses an endless supply of future data products remember that endless supply and a Construction project can be very complex. There are so many individuals involved and so many different ways of working, documenting, finding and sharing information and leading the way. That when you jump from an agile self-organization to 15 years back, it can be shocking. Lean processes and data flow are just a dream and standardization, even naming, is in its infancy. For example, I argue that there is no such a thing like a smart building. As we defined with my good friend Maria Niemi, first, you need to find the right kind of mindset. Then you can make smart choices and you can design smartly. And then you can purchase smart solutions for your smartish building or office and roll out smart processes and smart maintenance. But this requires a lot of changes in the traditional, uh, traditional mindset. And I would say artificial intelligence used in one or two solutions doesn't make a building smart. The smart people do. And this image is an example of fire alarm and smoke control system. And that's just a minor detail in the whole solution architecture. And this happens anyway, whether you design it smart or not. And it even has legal requirements. Anyway, I was lucky to see a perfectly constructed building. At least the idea was brilliant. The project proceeded in harmony with enough time taken with the best partners, teams and lead. The idea was unique it, 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 to, and to be sustainable and a home for an urban community for years to come. 
that sounds like utopia, but it seemed to be real. And when it comes to sharing and using data in business processes and decision making, it's all about the majority. Even though you would want to, you just can't leave from the lowest majority level to the top. You have to learn and understand. You have to know your environment and the dependencies and the consequences. And you have to understand the value chain or value network and you know your data. You have to secure your core and write the strategy for data and API management. And you have to ensure the integrity, usability, and reliability of your data. And after all of this, you can move to the next level. Operational technology has evolved in shades. The shades. The automated processes are not a new thing. But in this context, the integrated environment is. It's and especially when you integrate the silos of OT with silos of IT, so operational and information technology, that's when you get an interesting combination of problems to solve, believe me. And I always say that simple is beautiful. That's the little physicist in me. But still, even though the, most, the solution would be beautiful, you need to make sure the continuity is covered. And even the most beautiful and elegant solution may enclose harm inside. And as you saw, there is an endless field to conquer for API developers and data scientists. But still, the problem is not technical, as we have heard today and yesterday. I, I would want to make the business make a business decision makers to see the potential of unseen operational technology. And I love to share this pain with you because it's, it, it's an opportunity, huge opportunity, not a frightening threat. And actually one special feature in operational technology is that it's obvious but it's mostly unseen. You just can't notice that some system is operating in the building. And the second is life. And in the built environment, life is always to be considered. If it's not a human, it's for example, a fish in an aquarium or a horse in a stable. And one of the most important things in operational technology is take care of the, the operational safety and the conditions of the environment, the temperature, the light, and the air we breathe. And to ensure safety and continuity uh, from all perspe perspectives, we need to concentrate on cyber sec security, identity and access management, and the know-how. We need more competent IT-oriented people to help construction and life cycle management in the built on environment to adapt a necessary change caused by digitalization. And we need to find the same path with IT because it's not a convergence of IT and OT, but it's a joint adventure. And the, the, the goal is the same anyway, and they both need each other to build a better and sustainable future for us. So, Use your environment and data wisely to increase sustainability in your, uh, in your company. Design it wi wisely to avoid overlapping te technology and solutions 
to save money, time, and also natural resources. Use your environment wisely to ensure continuity in the built environment you operate in. And use it wisely to discover the unseen, the opportunities your own data is to offer. Look beyond the box and keep your perspective dynamic. And even though you would like to follow all the trends at the same time, remember that simple is beautiful. Try to focus on one trend at a time and understand your data. So my name is Hanna Pikkusari, and thanks for listening to this. Uh, my presentation has stay safe. If you want to, we can try to run the nice video again. Well, thank you, Hannah. Um, we may have time, although um, uh, we did also get the opportunity to read it as uh, as it was being shown. So um, I, I'd love to thank you for your insights. And uh, um, you've obviously um, thought very deeply about the, um, the, the broader challenges that are facing this, you know, Big um, uh, attention and interest in uh, the you know the construction and the building industry starting to absorb uh, you know thinking of new ways of working and so on. I I couldn't help thinking that having um, uh, grown up in an environment where uh, projects IT related projects had learnt their disciplines and standards and processes from the construction industry and then. Uh, rebelled against that kind of waterfall uh, way of thinking into um, more iterative and uh, increasingly agile approaches um, and that, uh, you know, many people have gone through a lot of change in terms of understanding that and now that's now playing back into the uh, the industries that uh, uh, kind of set the, set the, the, wrote the book on project management um, all those years ago. So uh, how, how are you in a practical sense helping people absorb these new ways of, of thinking about things. Um. Well, yeah, thanks. Uh, well, in Osago, Osango, of course, we teach and we discuss and, and we're this, uh, like a consulting, um, uh, consulting way, but, but uh, we need more discussion, like open discussion. Uh, like uh, we should write more about operational technology, and it's it's like uh, as I said, it has evolved in the shades. It's I think it's surprising when I when I saw the, the like like all the these uh, technical issues related to uh, buildings, but it, it's not even just buildings, but it's it's everything like non-carpeted uh, IT, something you just can't see, like industrial uh, and all the, the, the sensors and all the like unseen possibilities. And I, I think it's somehow a new thing today, even mm -hmm. though it's very old and automation is an old thing, but, but still, when you start to integrate those systems that have been in silos through like ages. So, so that's, that makes it interesting. And then when you have this like kind of smart building solutions, even though you, though you um, uh, design those solutions like smartly, wisely, uh, then, then when you integrate them to IT solutions. So that's there is interesting things to solve, and and I would say that I've been discussing with many uh, teachers that are teaching like something related to this topic, but there is no such like line to, where they would be teaching this this like uh, digital digitalization of uh, this operational technology environment and all the all the like integration solution architecture like 
the architecture, the continuity seems to be something new. Even though when you come from IT, it's like the first thing you you think, what's what's the where is, where is this solution going to be, and what are the dependencies, and what's the continuity, and your planet and everything. But in OT world, it's it, it's not the same. <laughs> well, yes, and and I think this. Um... Uh, if, if you think about how the risks um, and the skill sets have built up in that industry, it has all been about um, very, as you said, you know, physical, concrete evidence and um, visibility of things that are engineered for safety, for, um, uh, uh, for, 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 for tenure, but, but there is a very clear start and stop. You know, those of us in the IT industry um, have got very used to understanding that you know, things continuously evolve and at the outset, you know, the ideas that you may have are, are going to iterate over time and you're going to get feedback. You know, once you've decided what a building looks like, <laughs> after mm -hmm. um, you know, people can point to other ones, they can, you know, they can, they can visualise it um, uh, quite clearly. They can physically see it in front of them. Um, so it's a very different type of headspace, yeah. I think. Yeah, and, and it, it, in a construction project, it happens that there are um, several different 3D models of the building. And why is that? <laughs> it shouldn't be like that. And when, when you create a beautiful 3D uh, image of the building and the, the solution for construction, you should be able to use it in the like life cycle management for the whole life cycle management. Yeah. And and then the other thing is that that nowadays when you uh, companies build these smart or smartish buildings, you, you can get lots of different uh, smart building solutions. Like for whatever use, you can get smart building solutions. And then when you look back, when you have installed all the solutions, you see that you have lots of sensors that are overlapping. So there is like that kind of discussions and a design should be also used that avoid the overlapping. Yeah, no, fantastic insights. Um, <laughs> but we're actually at time. So, uh, yes. um, so I know that uh, you're going to be back joining us in 25 minutes for the panel. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh,